So this session will, will be actually is correlated to the uh, last one we have. And I'm, I'm going to talk about um, taking on Linux and make it a, a networking OS in a way that we can uh, uh, use it in, in, uh, uh, in both in physical switches and routers and in uh, hypervisor with an e-switch uh, within them. Um, so uh, we are looking for a, a uniform, uniform way to, to model the, uh, the networking part of the, uh, the OS. And the uh, open issues that we have here is uh, first, currently, in, in if, if we look at um, a current switch system, most of the time we'll see that uh, the software path is not fully capable of forwarding traffic because uh, um, the switch is not there. The layer two switch, for exa example, is not there. So you have an hardware that is fully capable of forwarding traffic and you have a software that know how to handle a protocol or some kind of exception, but not all of it. So this is the first uh, challenge that we are facing. Uh, the second one is related to, uh, to, to a language. If we look at uh, the different path that we can use in order to, to forward traffic, so we have the, uh, the top one, which is uh, via controller, so we are going to ask a very smart controller what to do, and the traffic will go via the controller. It could be open for some other uh, protocol or uh, in order to talk with the uh, uh, low level, and then we can go via user space. Um, we can go via kernel, and then the other. So if we look at, uh, and there was some part missing here, so if we look, there, there is a language to talk between the uh, controller and the uh, low level, which is called like, OpenFlow, for example. We have a, a very clear language to talk from the user space to the kernel. It could be um, BRCTL or OVS command or some other uh, 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 de facto standard languages. We do not have any uh, standard language in order to model the uh, hardware configuration. Uh, so this is what we're looking for in order to model uh, to give a very clean model of uh, the scheme. So uh, uh, one more thing, as, as we see it, we want uh, a software switch or router look like, uh, sorry, a switch or router to look like uh, full, we, we have the full, we want to have uh, the full capability in, in software so uh, you will not do everything, and the hardware will act only as acceleration. So if you have an hardware, you can accelerate what you can. So if you have a very smart hardware, we probably you, you will accelerate all the flow. And if you have a limited uh, capability hardware, so you can accelerate only a few of them. This will give you an advantage because as we move, we moving forward, we see uh, uh, a new protocol each and every day, and then if you have an old hardware and you have a new protocol and you want to support, you can do, to do it with this scheme because you can, you can accelerate all other protocols that you do support and the one that you are not support, you can do it in software. You can do them in software and still support them in your box. So in order to do so, let's start and look how a network looks like, how network components look like. So this is actually the basic building blocks of a network component. Uh, probably it's not you uh, or uh, every one of uh, you, you familiar with that. So if we look at the physical interface, we will have the administrative, of course, MTU, flow and control, buffering, quality of service, ETS, S-flow, and all the other stuff written there. Uh, we have state. This port can be up, down. Statistics. Uh, LCP state of the port, this is for bonding. And there are a bunch of protocol working on that layer that LDP, DCBX, QCN, flow control. Um, next uh, layer is the uh, bridge port actually, uh, which could port to be compliant with the uh, OVS scheme. So uh, on port we have, uh, 
we have all the, uh, the dot one q attributes such as VLAN, VLAN membership, uh, bond, the configuration of the bond itself, STP state, um, and there are a bunch of protocol running on that layer like LAC, LACP, and the state of this layer is STP uh, um, statistic as well. Next layer is the bridge. In the bridge we have the FDB and the uh, MSTP configuration spanning tree itself. We have uh, dynamic MAC as a state and IGMP XSTP running an MLAG that we can add to a bridge. MLAG is a multi chassis lag. Um, layer free interfaces are uh, actually the router port interfaces. So on that layer, um, we have the IP in the subnet of uh, the interface and uh, VRP, ARP, DHCP are a protocol that, for example, can running on that layer of uh, the network. And on top of it, we have the router, uh, which has all the static and dynamic FDB, and all the routing protocol are correlated with this layer. So, we see uh, what we are trying to, to go, and this is a possible solution. Um, so, just a minute, we try to, because the missing part here. Can we move the projector somehow? Well, I will try to, to change resolution. Okay, I will try to change resolution. Okay. So it will take you a minute. Skip it. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so we will continue. Never mind. I, I will tell you what is there in the right side. Believe me. Um, so uh, the mo the model I want to uh, propose is. Uh, Using OVS uh, in order to, uh, to model the layer t three, two part, at least at the first uh, stage. So in the green part on the right, we see the OVS DB. The OVS DB will be actually uh, the server uh, on the management part. So if we look at all the right part here in the slide, we will see all the software components. So we have OVSDB, we have um, the configuration of OVSCTL in order to uh, configure, the, configure the DB. Uh, we can uh, get configuration from API Daylight, for, for example, uh, to the DB as well. But this is only an example. Um, and we have VSVGD that uh, react to the configuration and also update state. Um, and uh, we have the kernel, uh, the data path of the OVSDB, which is part kernel and user space. And uh, 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 as a result, we have fully functional software uh, forwarding. Moving to the left part, 
So in the left part, we have uh, the auto accelerator. So the auto accelerator uh, receives notification on configuration and state change as well from the OVSDB and configure the auto according. So uh, in this scheme, we have a fully functional software, fl software uh, forwarding plan and auto accelerator uh, as well. In order to do it, we have actually for each auto port, we have a, 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 a correlating uh, software port, uh, meaning a uh, Linux net device. Uh, 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 okay, something I did cover, layer free. So for layer free, we will have uh, additional process that will monitor actually the kernel uh, notification on uh, route add and remove, ARP, uh, add and remove, and configure the hardware according as well. So we will get a fully uh, layer two and layer three functional switch router with uh, 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 fully functional software. And the nice thing with this scheme, this is generic. So you can see the uh, vendor SDK and not Mellanox, which is where I work. Um, so it could be Broadcom, Intel, whatever. Uh, and the right part is totally open and totally standard. And the left part, you know, you just need to take your SDK, tie it together to the OVS uh, DB client, and you have a working system. Yeah, I thought. Totally right. This is a good question. Actually, if I had this, my requirement would be no performance impact on going to OBS. So I should be able to plumb in OBS, let the thing run, um, and if I'm not doing any encapsulation or any, any chance of rules, I shouldn't see a performance impact. That would be perfect. Totally right. This is the goal. Yes. Can you speak louder? Um, sorry. sorry. Totally right. The thing that would worry me more is the functionality that you would lose when the hardware acceleration was enabled. Uh, specifically, let's take for example, uh, you add an IP tables rule to your kernel. If you've reflected all your routes down into your, your accelerating hardware, you're no longer seeing those packets. How do you propose to handle that? So this is a, a good and a question that I don't have a, a clear answer uh, to. So, uh, and because I didn't find, we didn't find a clean way to reflect IP route rule to the hardware. Um, what we thought of is, uh, and again, this is only an idea, is uh, if you want to configure a hardware engine like a ACL, so you will use the, uh, uh, the flow table in OVS. If, you, uh, if the user configured the IP table, this is configure, it means to configure the slow path of this uh, machine. So, because there are two words here. The first word is the data path. So data path is supposed to go mainly on hardware. And there will, all, will always be a slow path as well. So even if you are perfect and your hardware are fully capable, 
you still have STP, LACP, um, OSP, FPDU, and uh, exception from the router if there is a hard miss, for instance. Uh, that's a very fair point, and, and I, I understand what you're saying. I've asked other people about this to see what their ideas on a solution like this were, and I've heard myriad answers, uh, most of which have, have resulted to saying, well, if you configure something that requires that the CPU complex see uh, a given set of packets, we just remove that particular flow from the hardware so that it gets sent back up there. Of course, the implication there is all of a sudden you've lost your hardware acceleration, and I kind of feel like this would be a fantastic win the very same day you get both. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally agree again. It's not that we solve all the problem. There are still uh, open issues there. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we were kind of looking at similar problems, but I, do you think there are two separate tables then? Or is there one aggregated um, table? I, mean, I see you have your OVS data path, which has its own table. And then your hardware switch probably has its own table as well. Right. right? So they're two separate. Where, where are they aggregated? Are they aggregated by your, at the reflector level? I mean, is there only one table at the reflector that's being somehow di divided into two subtables? Or is, is that division occurring at higher level in the stack, maybe in the controller? So, from my point of view, if we look at OVS and all the software data, data path, he's not aware that there is an arbitrary beneath him. So, he, he maintained all the flow table that he, uh, 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 the user configure, open flow configure, or some other entity configure. In parallel, uh, OVS, the, the SDK received the same configuration, and according to his capability, uh, configured the other. So the, you're asking if the, table are, uh, the tables are uh, similar. In a perfect world, probably yes. If you have a fully capable hardware, the answer will be yes. Probably not because uh, your, your software will always be more stronger in a way of functionality than hardware. So, again, the, 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 uh, the problem here is how to, how to determine what you can and what you cannot and how to, uh, to know which flow to, you want to go to the slope of. So, the, the, there is a brain in the area of the SDK connected with the obvious DB or from the router uh, notification above, which we call a net reflector. Uh, but this is the, uh, the idea. Uh, I have a hearing problem. <laughs> I can speak louder, sorry. That model then is, who has the truth? Where is the source of truth? There is, at any given time, a changing reflector state, there's at any given time a changing hardware state, there's any given time a whole bunch of control state that's running in Linux completely outside this picture, and you have a whole bunch of state that's potentially changing, maybe not so much in the software, the pure software part. Debugging this, who, where do you look? Which, which component has truth? So, it's, it's distributed, right? Because if you look at OVS itself, so the OVS itself has a user, uh, as a flow rules and a cache in the kernel. So you can ask the same question there, right? Who has the truth? Is it the kernel that caches some flows or the user space that have all the picture? So here is more like the same. It is the, in a, I would argue it is the kernel because the kernel state is what actually gets implemented. Here, there are multiple agents implementing and forwarding data, which means you don't really know whose state you're actually implementing. So, so, so I, I, I look at, it's, from my point of view, mo, 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 uh, the same. If you are talking about bugs, so if you have a bugs, you, so again. You have a problem that in your hardware side, you try to pack a table and TCAM packing required oh, you to. This is a great question. So, the beauty in this model that, you can debug, debug it much easier than in the model I, I, I am familiar with today, that they are working today, because then you can say, okay, let's, you, are, we can, you can go to the uh, slope, to the, your hardware and, and say, okay, slope of from now, uh, I want 
all the traffic to go to the software and then check what, what will happen. If you have your software know how to follow the traffic and your hardware or not, you probably have a bug whether in your SDK or in your hardware. So uh, uh, flash it, give it to the uh, hardware guys, uh, go to the SDK guys, dump, I don't know, do whatever you, you want to do in order to debug. Um, if your software won't follow the traffic as well, so you, you have uh, much better uh, debug tools in software than in hardware, so debug it. Um, I, I was just saying it's a little bit of an interesting problem to how to uh, divide one table into multiple subtables and prove that they're equivalent. Noting that your that your tables may not have the same functionality or even be the same size, right? Yeah, different uh, totally TCAM right. limitations and things. So, so, so uh, I will refer to that in the next slide, actually. Can you speak louder? Sorry. <laughs> We need to wrap up. We're already 20 minutes late. Oh, oh. So, okay. So here we, what we get after we implement uh, the, the last, the, the, the proposal. So we took a quite standard uh, building blocks that we have today. And there are still some missing parts. So um, actually most of them are, are qu quite trivial to add. Uh, the big ones are uh, missing layer two, layer three configuration and, uh, uh, in the OVS because we do not have it currently OV, OV, OVS, so we can add it to the OVS or add another database that will do exactly the thing. And let me go to the next slide. So in order to, 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 to implement what uh, we suggest, there is uh, one major issue still open. And it is related to the question you, you ask. So real hardware don't look like OVS uh, multi-table because the table size are much smaller probably. The match and the key, we have ma less match and key in hardware. The action are, uh, uh, we have less action in hardware as well. Uh, so First approach is to, this, to say, okay, let's accelerate what we can and not accelerate what we cannot, and it will still work. The problem with that is that uh, most of the time admins that configure the network not to, want to control how the network will behave. So it is uh, reasonable to say that we need a way to, to uh, cause OVS to reflect what the admin want him to reflect, meaning if I have an hardware that have only FDB and router and do not have a TCAM at, at all, for, for example, then I want OVS to say to the controller and to the user that configure it via a uh, bash or CLI, never, the, the, uh, the UI is, uh, never mind. Um, this is my table and this is what I know to, how to do. And I do not support a, a, a very complex action or uh, go from jump from table to table. This is a, not an action I can perform. In that, in that way, admin uh, can control uh, the way their network behaves. So, some slide jumps. Sorry. Two minutes. So this is the full picture. So we can add, in order to, to, to have a full, fully support switch layer three, both layer three and layer four, layer two and layer three, sorry, we should add the following components. So we should add um, database in, in OVSDB in order to control the layer three protocol, such as Quagga, but it could be any protocol. Um, we should probably uh, have some UIs tied to the OVSDB it could be a CLI, Puppet, Chef, some other automation tool that can configure the, the OVSDB. Um, all the other uh, look the same. I have another slide, but 
I won't jump to it because we want to go to the party. Um, just to say, the scheme is uh, valid not only for switches, hardware switches for NIC and e-switches as well. And uh, the model, from my point of view, stays the same, meaning there is a fully functional hardware capability with the uh, physical, which is the VM, uh, SRIOV uh, NICs in the hardware. There is an instance, software instance, of this NIC in software, and what you can do in your hardware, do in your hardware, and all the other we can do in software. Um, thank you, and I, you know, we, we should probably get this thing going and continue the conversation, you know, could be on a, a hall or some other. Thank you very much.